Hello everybody, welcome back to Arthanex's tutorial let's play of Twilight Struggle. Alright, I thought um, this, whenever I load up the game again, it takes me back a little bit to the last decision point. So, in this case it's taking me back to the end of turn screen for turn 3 and the end of the early war. And I just thought it might be a little bit useful to take a quick look at both the, uh, my hand, the discard pile, and the remove from game deck, just to kind of recap where we're at since uh, it's been a few days since I played this game. So looking at the remove from play hand uh, pile, we can see that there's a lot more of his events in here than there are of mine. This is obviously good, good news for me, since it means that there's a lot more of my events still in the deck. However... Some of my most powerful cards have been played, um, but a lot of his cards have been played. It's always nice to see Warsaw Pact form out of the deck, for example. Um, looking at the discard pile, we can see that we've done Middle East scoring. The deck's not going to be reshuffled when we add the mid-war cards, so we won't have to worry about Middle East scoring again for quite a while. Um, at least I don't think it's reshuffled. I can check at the beginning of my next turn, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So. Uh, we can leave the Middle East alone for a little while and focus on other places. Uh, looking at my, looking up here, we can see that I'm ahead one on the space race track. Uh, I'm up by one point, and we're about to go into the mid-war. So let's hit continue. So we're going to add the mid-war. Uh, I should say at this point that most Twilight Struggle games that I've played are decided in the mid-war. Uh, one way or the other so it's a little bit unusual but not not certainly not unheard of for a game to be won or lost in the early war but it generally means one or the other players made a mistake somewhere along the line uh but it's also a little bit unusual for it to make it all the way to the to the end of the game most twilight struggle games are decided either in the middle war or in the first couple rounds of the late war so we're getting into the point now where the game is going to be won or lost Either way. Okay, so looking at the board, we can see that we have an edge in Europe. That's always nice to see. Europe is the most valuable territory, but we're definitely behind in Asia. We only have uh, two battleground countries, Japan and Pakistan. We haven't put anything in South Korea, although the Korean War has already happened. We do have the China card, however, so that will give us a big advantage in playing in Asia. Uh, looking in Africa, it looks like he's definitely ahead in Africa, and neither player has played anything in Central or South America yet. Uh, Alright, so now let's talk for a brief second about some of the cards that the players have to be aware of in the mid-war. So we already talked about a few in the, in the early war, cards like Warsaw Pact, Romanian Abdication, Castro, things like that, and Nasser. In the mid-war... There's a few more cards that you just kind of have to be aware of. First of all, um, the U.S. player needs to be aware of a card called Muslim Rev Revolution. Uh, this is a four ops card for the USSR that can remove all influence in two Muslim countries. That is Libya, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, Iraq, Iran. Uh, I don't, and maybe Syria. I don't remember if Syria is on there or not. Anyway. Uh, so you got to be aware of that. He could potentially play that. It'd be devastating. Now the AI in this game doesn't usually play that for its event, although it has occasionally done it. Um, but it can still be pretty devastating, so you got to be aware of that. The USSR player has to be worried. Now that we're in the mid-war, there's another card. Um, so let's see, I don't think Nasser has been played. Nasser has not been played. There's another card that removes USSR influence from Egypt and adds US influence there kind of the reverse of the Nasser card. So the USSR player has to be aware of that. Uh, looking at my hand, let's see. Nothing in my hand seems particularly good. So I may wind up just, let's see, we did get Central America scoring. Um, one thing to note about Central America scoring it is is the um, least valuable of all of the regions. You only get three extra points for domination and only one for presence. But since it is in our hand, we'll probably make an effort to do that. I'm thinking we're going to headline defectors. Let's see, we could also do this. 
this is a pretty good one to headline um, because it's obviously going to be played as an event. I could use it to throw two influence in Venezuela, for example, where it's a little bit hard for me to get influence otherwise. Of course, I would be inviting him to coup Venezuela if I did that. Um, I could also use it to throw a couple influence in Mexico. Venezuela is a key country because of another one of the cards that enters play in the mid-war, and that's uh, another USSR card called OPEC. And that give the U gives the USSR player victory points for every oil-producing country that he controls. Um, now, I have most of the oil-producing countries in the Middle East. Um, those countries are Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, I think... Libya, I not I don't remember if Egypt is on there or not, and Venezuela is kind of the non one non uh, Middle East one. Hmm, I think even though it's only one point of difference, I think I'm going to headline this instead of defectors because this is still a two point card and this is only a one point card. So we'll hope his defectors is not too, the card he's going to play with defectors is not too bad. He can't wreck us with a scoring card. He'd get a, he'd get a point or two in Asia. He'd get uh, two points out of Southeast Asia. I can live with that, either of those. So we're going to headline this. Um, so he did destalinization. So he's going to relocate a bunch of influence. Um, which means he has to take it away from somewhere. He doesn't have a lot of extra influence in places, so it'll be interesting to see where he decides to take it away. So he took one away from Israel and one away from Lebanon, I think? And put one in Nigeria and one in Angola. He's really going for a lot of Africa. Uh, so I think I will... It's just kind of inviting a coup attempt is the problem, to put it in Venezuela. But... He has a card, another mid-war card that he gets gives him two influence in Chile. But it doesn't remove any of my influence. Uh, I think I'm going to put it in Mexico. We do have a scoring card for Central America. So if he wants to coup Mexico, he can coup Mexico. He doesn't. It's not as critical as Central as uh, Venezuela, so he usually doesn't do it. But we'll see. All right, so we'll confirm that. So if he has Africa scoring now, he's going to get a lot of points out of it. Yeah, six points. Africa scoring is in the deck now, so that is definitely a possibility. We don't have a lot of high-value cards in our hand. All right, so there's the Muslim Revolution card. He got it, and he played it for influence. And he is just totally dominating Africa now. He has eight points in Africa. Uh, so we obviously need to do something about that. Um... And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my coup attempt. I don't have any really good cards to play for it. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to do a coup attempt. This will prevent him from doing more coup attempts this turn. And we're going to coup Angola. Which has a pretty good chance of success because it's only one um, defense value. And it could potentially, hopefully we won't roll a one. Let's see. We rolled a two. All right. So he can't coup it back from us. Uh, and at least gives us some presence here. So it takes him down to five victory points in Africa. <clears throat> Which is a whole lot better than the eight he would have gotten just a second ago. All right. So he's playing Cultural Revolution. He has some high value cards, which is unfortunate. All right, I really would like a three-value card, so I could take back Angola and put two in South Africa. But unfortunately, the only one I have is the China card, and I don't. I want to spend that in Asia. I don't want to spend it in Africa. So, um, I'm left with a two-value, a whole bunch of two-value cards. 
Independent Reds would actually be pretty good to play as an event. Um, I could actually take an Eastern European country for him, from him, like Romania, for example. Could I play Independent Reds for Romania? I can. Independent Reds and Truman Doctrine could, if I play them one after another, could actually give me control of your Romanian. Since Romania is adjacent to the USSR, it's worth a point in Europe scoring. I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, well, I think I definitely am going to have to take Angola back. So we'll place one here and one there. And next turn, we'll finish off South Africa if we can. <laughs> As we wait for him to decide. So what does the Soviet player have to worry about during the mid-war? Well, <coughs> um, NASA for realignment. Okay, he outrolled me by one. He had even on that one. So I can take back Angola and play in South Africa again. Um, the the biggest I guess the Voice of America card is the biggest one that lets the U.S. player remove for USSR influence. Uh, there's also see, I'm trying to remember um, Camp David Accords, which will get, remove the uh, Israel war event from the game. Uh, there's or at least it doesn't remove it from the game, but it can't be played as an event anymore. The Egypt one I already talked about. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any in Asia. None are coming to mind. Uh, this one lets you add influence in countries that currently contain no influence from either power. It's pretty good. Um, this one lets you leapfrog your opponent in the space race. But uh, since I'm ahead, it obviously doesn't do me any good. So I'm going to go ahead and take back Angola and play in South Africa. So now I have one battleground in Africa, even if he manages to re uh, realignment my influence away in Angola. <clears throat> that also gives me an extra bonus. Ooh. He played John Paul II elected Pope. This is one of another card that the USSR has to be aware of in the mid-game. Remove two of USSR influence in Poland and then add one. So this is like the um, this is like the France event that's an early game event. The De Gaulle leads France. Well, he outrolled me by two. And he had to, too, because I have plus two now, thanks to South Africa. Uh, well, I obviously have to keep fighting him in Angola. Is he going to try again? He might. Even if I just tie him, though, I'll get Angola back. No, he's going to try in South Africa. And that did not work. All right, so, yeah, so that removed two of his influence from Poland. So I can definitely have a chance of taking Poland now. I can actually, um, if I had better value cards in my hand, I'd be in a much better position here. Uh, let's see, I have four cards left to play, and I have to play Central America scoring. Um... Let's see. I need to take Angola back. I would like for him not to have domination in... I kind of forget exactly what the requirements are for domination, but I'd like to have him not have him dom a domination in Africa. Um, but I'd also like to take Panama, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll do uh, puppet governments to place influence, and we'll put one in Angola and one in Panama. So now I'm getting three points out of Central America scoring, one for each of the battlegrounds plus the um, presence role. He also has not played any military ops yet, so presumably he's going to do a coup attempt. All right, so he played Africa scoring. He got four points out of it. Uh, which could have been a lot worse, actually, considering how much an advantage he had there. But at least we managed to keep him from getting like eight or nine points. Now, 
Uh, let's see. I don't want to put influence in a non-battleground country over here, because then he'll just coup it. So, uh, I could put influence in Cuba, but I don't think it's worth the points. I think I'm just going to play this and take my three points. It's pretty hard to get a lot of points out of Central America, so I think I'll be happy with that. So he got four out of Africa, and I got three out of Central America. I can live with that. So... This is that's an example of not getting greedy, because <laughs> if I tried to get domination here, it would have been two extra points. But then he would have, since he needs to do a coup attempt anyway. Um, all right, so he set DEFCON level to three because he needs to do a coup attempt for military ops. But uh, he can't do one right now because I control no battleground, no non-battleground countries in Africa. I have no influence in any non-battleground countries in, in either of these. Um, so he can't do a coup attempt. So uh, he had to play that for influence. Now that I've played my scoring card, let's see if I have any more cards. I definitely want to play, I have two more cards to play. Uh, I definitely want to play the China card for influence. Uh, I can play this now that I don't have any scoring cards in my hand. And if I do a coup attempt, then he won't be able to do one. So where do I want to do a coup attempt? I can't do one in Asia or uh, Europe. So, uh, and I want to do a battleground country. Africa scoring just got played. So... Yeah, Africa and Middle East scoring are all in the discard pile. So I can't, unfortunately, can't do one in Asia. Um, hmm. So I guess I'll just coup Zaire, even though it's kind of pointless because Africa scoring just got played. But it's still probably worth it. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. Nice. That gives me a pretty good stronghold in Zaire. You'd have to roll really well on a coup attempt to take it back. Or play a high value card and coup it, which he could also do. Alright, now, so now it's his turn. We'll see what he does. If he doesn't do any military ops... Oh, he played... He had Asia scoring, too. Interesting. Wow. See, this is an advantage. If I'd known he had Asia scoring, I would have played the China card last turn, probably, because I knew he wouldn't be able to coup. Uh, but because I didn't know he had Asia scoring, he was able to get away with it. But we still got a point on him, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, and we're going to get two more points at the end of the round, because... Oh, no, he has... How does he have five military ops? Oh, that's right. He played... <sighs> he played... Uh, let's see, I guess it's removed from the game. He played this, which gives him five military ops, and I totally forgot that that gives you military ops, so that's my bad. So, booing Zaire was kind of a waste. But, it's not the end of the world. Now, I could play the China card here, but I'm actually thinking about just keeping it, because... Um... Asia scoring just got played, and I don't want to hand him a four in four ops card. Of course, there's Southeast Asia scoring, which hasn't been played yet. Um, no, I think I'll play it. Um, so we'll put three influence in India and two influence in Malaysia. And next turn... We'll keep working on Southeast Asia. Whoever has Thailand has a big advantage in Southeast Asia scoring. All right. So we still have this combo in our hand, and we might want to use it as a headline if we don't draw anything better. And in fact, we didn't. We could do Cuban Missile Crisis to prevent him from doing any coup attempts. Um. If we don't, there's a pretty good chance he's going to coup Malaysia with the China card. Oh, no, he can't, because we're at DEFCON 3, right? 
Uh, and I don't really care about him doing any coup attempts over here on this turn, since Central America scoring has just been played. We got Arab-Israeli war. He's currently at minus two for that. Uh, so, hmm, we might want a coup in Lebanon. Yeah, I think I'm going to headline... Uh, let's see, we could headline Nixon plays the China card. That would give us the China card back. Although, I might rather just take the two VPs. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to headline this. and Because Europe scoring is still out there. And we'll try and take... Um... Alright, he got one victory point and the DEFCON level has improved to five. Uh, all right, Europe scoring a skill out there, so we'll headline independent reds and see if we could take Romania from him, because that'll be worth an extra victory point in Europe scoring. Because now we can play Truman Doctrine, remove all his influence in Romania. Does this? Yeah. All right, so he's doing a coup. Yeah, he couped Malaysia. Not surprised. Uh, he played, that's probably why he played Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Um, you could try and do Brush War. Let's see, DEFCON level's at 5. And NATO hasn't been played. Do you have any isolated... Rush war, we'd be at we'd be at a fifty fifty. He could coup it again, but of course we have the China card now. Um Let's see. I don't want him to get a ton of points from Southeast Asia scoring, though. So the choice is play Brush War on Malaysia or use a card like Cuban Missile Crisis to do a coup attempt in like Libya or somewhere. But Middle East scoring has already been played. Uh, there's also South America scoring to think about. Or, because Europe scoring hasn't been played yet, we could just do this and take Romania. And focus on Europe. We're actually in a pretty decent position get a ton of victory points in Europe if he doesn't contest it. All right, I think I'm going to go the Europe strategy. We're going to play this as an event, and we're going to remove all his influence in Romania. <laughs> and then we're going to try for Poland. We'll see what he does. He played U2 Incident for Influence. Okay, no surprise there. He's going to go for Southeast Asia scoring. I'm going to place this for Influence, and we are going to take Poland. Uh, we'll see what he does. Um, whatever he does, I'm probably, let's see, unless he plays Southeast Asia scoring this turn. Nice. I'm going to do a coup attempt in Thailand. I'll use my highest, let's see, I could brush ward instead of coup attempt it. Let's see, I need to roll a four. Maybe that's the better play. 
Now, if I coup it, if I brush ward, he can coup attempt it back. Hmm. Because it won't degrade the Defcon level. I can coup attempt it with a lesser card and then brush ward if I fail. Let's see. It has a defense of four, so if I play a two value card on it, I would need to roll a four to remove his influence and a five. Yeah, if I played a three value card on it, I'd need to roll a C. Three to remove his influence, a four to put one there myself. I wouldn't have another shot at it. Um, on the other hand, Brush War, if I play it, he could try and coup it back. He'd have to roll a four, though, to remove. He could realign it, I guess. No, he, he couldn't, yeah. It's a tough call. It is a tough call for sure. The good news is he's kind of let us run roughshod over Europe. Um, I think I'm just going to play it as an event and we will try and take Thailand this way. 50-50 chance. Go ahead and roll. Alright, we roll the one. That's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes in this game sometimes. So let's see if he plays Southeast Asia scoring now, or if he tries to get greedy with it. Oh, so he played the Egypt card. Interesting. So he does a coup attempt. I can still try and coup in Thailand. And if he does not coup somewhere in a battleground country somewhere, nope, he will. He doesn't want me to coup in Thailand. Oh no, he cooed in a non-battleground country. That's kind of useless for him. Um, which one of these do I want to play? Uh, I think I'm just going to play this for a coup attempt in Thailand. And maybe we'll roll better. Hey, how about that? All right. Took us two rolls, but we took Thailand from him. And he cannot coup there now. Thailand is worth two points in Southeast Asia scoring, too. So now he's only he went from getting five points with it to only getting one point. Pretty good. Um... Interesting. Use controls to play one at least country. US player draws the top five cards of the draw pile. They reveal and discard any or all of those drawn cards without triggering the events. Uh, well, we can definitely want to get rid of this one. Um, and we can definitely get rid of this one. And I guess we'll keep those. So now, does he add one to Thailand to take it away from me? Or does he play in Europe? Or what does he do? Oh, he just played randomly. Interesting. Uh, alright. I think I'm going to play this. We're at DEFCON 3. So he can't... If we're at DEFCON 2 when I play this, he can use the ops to coup a battleground and win the game. But since we're at DEFCON 3, he can't do that. It forces me to reveal my hand, but that's okay. So, um, we'll resolve the event first. It means he'll place an influence somewhere where he does all 
All right, so he did a coup attempt in Panama, which degrades the DEFCON status to two, but that's okay. That doesn't lose me the game. And then I will place influence, and I will place one in Egypt. Then, since I have three here, and you need to roll a four, so even if he rolls a six, that will be reduced to three. So now I can play this card without, uh, assuming he doesn't take this back on his turn, I can play this card and there's no way that, oh, Alliance for Progress, two victory, three victory points. I always forget about this card because I've, I've, for some reason, all the times I've played this game, I've never drawn it. All the times I've played it is the US. I've never drawn it. Um, so <laughs> I always forget about it. But this is definitely a card that the US player should be aware of, Alliance for Progress, because, uh, or the USSR player, because if you let the US player get a bunch of um, battleground countries, uh, all right, so he is just placing a ton of influence all over the place in Africa. Um, all right, so he did indeed take that back. How many more of these cards do I have to play? I have to play two more of these cards. Uh, I really don't want to play Arab-Israeli War when there's even a chance that I could lose it. I don't want to play either of these two cards because they both are really bad for me. Well, I guess I could play this now. Central America scoring has been played. Yeah, I think I'll play this. So I'll let him have Cuba. And then we'll place an influence in Egypt. Um, and an influence in Cambodia to give me another point off Southeast Asia scoring. So he's doing South Korea. Interesting. Um, all right, we can go ahead and resolve this event. Since there's no way he could win it. And then... Hmm. Let's go ahead and take Burma. All right, so he didn't have Southeast Asia scoring in his hand. All right, and that's going to do it, I think, for this episode. So hopefully you guys have at least a little bit of a better idea what to expect in the mid-war now. Um, again, I, know, I realize I'm playing this series very slowly, but I definitely want to give people the chance to see them and comment on them, point out any mistakes that they think I'm making, or ask any questions before I continue with the next episode. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you guys in the next episode. It looks like we got we got two turns in in that episode. We're still in the mid-war. Got one more mid-war round to go, or two. I kind of forget if the mid-war ends on round seven or round eight. Um, after round seven or round eight. I think it ends after round seven. Yeah. So, um, or I should say, if it ends after round six or round seven, I think it ends after turn six, so I think this is the last mid-war round, but I could be wrong about that. All right, I will see you guys in the next episode, and until then, have a terrific day.